second part, assessment. Okay, now we have an overview of what are the important key design issues when we want to come up with a building which is going to be easy to retrofit. Now, before you retrofit, we have to assess the building. So first, as build plans, then we go to an energy audit, then we talk about the building survey and equipment survey. Let's go one by one. First, as build plans. For any building, we have to have all of this. Architectural, structure, electrical, plumbing, mechanical specifications. Some of you are developers, some of you may be even building managers or owners. Do you have the as-built plans of your building? And I talk to, I'm talking about the real as-built plans. As architects, we know that when we start a building, normally part of the process, one well, of the process there in, in, in our uh, contract is the contractor should submit an as-built plan at the end of the project before final payment, correct? Now, when do they start the as-built plans? Shortly before the final collection. And who is going to remember exactly where those pipes passed? So, as field plans have to be started. Actually, in one project, I did an experiment. I told the contractor, from day one, I want somebody already drawing the as field plans as we lay the, the foundation, as we lay the cables and the pipes. I want somebody to be drawing. It worked fine for two weeks. After that, the guy got tied down and so many other things. Then we ended up with the same issue. No? As field plans were drawn at the last part of the project. No? What's the point? We have to have aspirin plans. If we don't have aspirin plans of our building, let's make sure we get it done. And then if we do a small renovation, or we relocate the pipe, or we change the valve, notate it right away in the plans. Because 10 years later, nobody's going to remember that that house actually was done. And then when you renovate, you'll have a lot of surprises. Okay, so make sure, first of all, you have a complete set of, of aspirin plans. Architectural, the structural, the electrical, Plumbing, you know, electrical, sometimes we just keep on extending, you know, we just stop from the from this, this panel board, you know, until one of these days you overextend that topic. You know? Second, energy and cost audit. We are retrofitting and renovating because we actually want to save energy, right? So before you start, make sure you actually know what is the going cost, so to speak, or usage of your existing building. So first, have data on the electrical consumption and cost. Remember, I'm separating consumption and cost. Consumption is kilowatt hours, cost is pesos. Why? Because sometimes the cost of electricity is variable. So have that two, two pieces two piece of information, right? You know? it's either the cost per month or the cost per year, or the electrical consumption per month or per year. Second, water consumption and cost for the same reason as the electricity. Okay? Know the volume of water you're utilizing maybe either every month or every year and know the cost because okay, these two are benchmarks when you have to retrofit you look back and see we were consuming so much before retrofitting and now we're doing so much it's very interesting because if not it would be a, a useless exercise no? third cost of maintenance and equipment because this will tell you whether the equipment is getting to be more efficient or not okay because for example if you see that the cost of maintaining your equipment is starting to go up. You might want to think something has to be done. Either maybe your equipment has reached the end of its lifetime, that it might be even cheaper to purchase something new, more energy efficient, and therefore will actually uh, consume less, 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 less energy. And of course, it costs less, less to maintain. And then this one, evaluation of comfort levels. This is going to be for the people using the building. Huh? Find out, no? how do, are they happy with the building? Is it bright enough? Is it cool enough? Is it healthy? That's it, because then, again, if you go to retrofit, you have to find out, no? what are the people experiencing because they are no users of the building, and see if we can actually improve on that. No? Third, building survey. Remember, we're talking about a building which was done without much thought on the aspect of energy efficiency without much thought on the aspect of green architecture. No? So, we have to get a lot of data so that we know how we're going to tackle retrofitting the building. So, climate and site data. One, know the solar path. No? Here we have the charge of the, the azimuth and altitude uh, of, of sun path, no? sun chart. No? So, the word, know where that is so that you can actually even compute where you can put your sun shading devices and even the length or the depth or the size depending on that sun. Second, know the ambient temperature outside throughout the year because it might be in your location 
some times of the year you can actually draw in actually fresh water, uh, sorry, fresh air, maybe early in the morning, and actually actually put the building without the need of chillers. Rainfall. Know it. Why? This is important if you decide to capture your rainwater and probably utilize it for flushing the toilets or, or, or uh, watering the garden or washing the cars. Because if you have that information, then you can compute the volume of that possibility of how much water you can actually utilize for recycling. Wind speed and direction. This is a windrose diagram. It tells you north, south, east, west. It tells you the strength of wind and the direction depending on the time period. It's important to know that so that you can actually use that information to be able to bring wind in to the building and bring wind out of the building. Topography. Have an overview and study of the, of the area because, for example, if you have mountains all around in certain areas, maybe it could be in the northeast, that means that maybe the wind coming from the northeast actually in your site is actually blocked. So consider that. No? Air quality. Know the particles per million of the air around you. Because it may not, if, if it is polluted outside, it may not be a good idea to bring the wind to the area. Right? Maybe if you do that, you may have to filter it first before you do that. Noise. Know the decibel level outside your building. So you can consider, if you go into retrofit, you might want to consider if the noise level outside is too high, you might want to consider how to insulate that so that the inside is more pleasant. Vegetation. What is the vegetation around? You see what it is, if it can help uh, your, your building. Then the wind affected by adjacent buildings. If you're building in a urban area, you just cannot follow blindly the habagat and amihan. Because buildings around you will affect that flow. It could either block it or even create greater air turbulence. Building form. Know your surface and volume ratio, meaning the glazing ratio. In other words, how much space or area of your building is exposed to the outside. Because then, if you're looking at heat insulation, that will give you a certain cost. You have so many square meters which is outside the building, and if you need to insulate it, you know that is that your, that is your area to insulate it. Glazing ratio. Know the ratio between your windows and your walls. No? Usually, it should be about 25 to 50. If it's more than that, sometimes it becomes a bit more hot inside. And then, building orientation, as mentioned earlier. See, how is your building oriented? What is the building form? And therefore, that will help you decide how you're going to treat your ex existing building. Then, finally, physical condition of the building. How is the structure? Very important, because if your structure is not sound, you might have to retrofit that structure first before anything else. Or if it's beyond repair, then you're no choice but except to tear down the building. Harder water leaks is the most difficult thing to determine where the problem is. And if there are water leaks, it could be a dangerous sign. So we have to sort out exactly where are those leaks coming from. Because, for example, water leaks which have actually entered the beams or the columns to small minute cracks may actually be corroding your reinforcement. So be careful. When you have water leaks, double check. Third, air infiltration. Maybe between, between the windows and the walls, there might be so many cracks or gaps that actually your aircon is actually getting out of the building. No? So you're pulling your immediate vicinity, okay? So it's good to check. And then there may be others depending on the situation of your building. No? Equipment survey. So find out the condition of your aircons, no? your pumps. Your elevator, escalator, your fans, your blowers, electrical panels, wires, controls, and others. Why? Two things. First, the operational cost. How much it actually is clocking in in terms of uh, electricity. And second, the maintenance cost. Because this will determine and tell you, hey, we're spending more than necessary in trying to maintain this piece of equipment. Okay, so now, now that we have gotten all that data, can we go to this stage here, no? to retrofit or not, that is the question.